All right, guys, this is going to be a quick uh, shootout slash mini review of these um, different circuit testers, power probes, whatever you want to call it. You know, they got a lot of different brand names or whatever. A lot of these are Chinese, well, pretty much all of them are. Um, but basically, I'm going to show you some of the cons and pros of all the different ones, and you can kind of make a decision for yourself which one is best for your needs. Okay, from the left, we have the uh, KM50. It's from, of course, it's Chinese, K Z Y E K Z, whatever. You know, you know how this stuff is. Um, this is like the upgraded model to this, which is kind of popular. A lot of people know this one. This is the KM10. Um, similar, they added a couple more buttons. The shape is a little bit different. Um, doesn't have the little holder at the back for the uh, probe if you wanted to take it off, whereas the old one does here. Um, uh, but they pretty much do the same thing. I think this one is a bit better. It gives you more features. You also got the min and max here for when you're um, doing some readings or whatnot. And a couple of other things they added, which I think it's better. Um, got the uh, KM10, of course, like I said, the simpler version. I mean, the older version, rather. Um, but it's just as effective, I would say, for your basic circuit test. Um, then you've got a cheapo here. Oh, by the way, this one's about... 60 70 bucks on eBay you can get scammed on Amazon for about 120 I believe if you want and this one ranges about the same price about 60 70 bucks um, this is a uh, cheapo um, it's basically like a test light your regular test light uh, the difference is then a test light is you're able to inject current like one of these uh, more advanced digital probes but this is a hundred percent analog um, tester so you can inject power and you could also inject down here ground so but like i said it's it's basic it's direct it doesn't have any type of circuitry circuit breaker anything like that so um whatever you it's it's actually very good for certain things if you know the differences between these and the delays versus a normal test light it's actually pretty helpful on certain situations this is cheap this is about 20 bucks to 25 bucks then you got the Autel, the what is it no Autu BT280, and this is um, the most expensive one out of the lineup I have here. This one ranges about 170 to 220, depending on where you buy. eBay, you're probably looking about 169, 170. Um, this one has a lot more features, but um, it's got its pros and its cons as well. Um, I like it; it's good for certain things. But to be honest, I would pick up this before I pick up that, unless I know there's a certain feature in that that I want to use. But I would pick this up a thousand times first before I messed with that. Um, this or this. These are my go-to. And believe it or not, this. Because I'm going to show you here in a second why I say this one. And here's the reason why I say that. I'm going to show you something that pretty much happens a lot when you're troubleshooting electrical issues. You can have an intermittent problem where there's a faulty wire or something like that, and it has maybe very bad contacts. So with this tool, which is basically a test light, you can just, you see, I'm just barely tapping that thing as fast as I tap it. You see, it's giving me a light. I'm getting that red light to let me know I'm hitting positive. So if there's a wire that's basically you know, on movement or something like that is short not. You'll be able to see that with this test light, right? And vice versa on the ground side. As fast as I could tap this thing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. You see, as fast as I can tap it, that's as fast as that's the same thing that's gonna happen basically once you're on a circuit that's got a flaky wire or something happening, something screwy going on, and maybe you know, some relay or something doing something crazy. You'd be able to see it right now with these other test testers let me show you something okay i got the km50 here let me show you on this one pretty much you can notice there's a delay in the sound because it, it's pulsing every so often to actually read that so if you have a connection that even might be intermittent where it is given some signal but very rarely where you might be able to detect it with test light this might fail you it might give you a look as i if i even go faster you barely hear the beeps and they should be matching how i'm touching right so but if you go slower like once a second you can update and this one is actually pretty fast 
the other model I believe is a bit slower. Yeah, it's also, it seems like it's almost on a timer when it actually checks this because I've kind of noticed, yeah, I'm, I just kind of went off pace and it wasn't detecting either of those. So that can also throw you off on checking fuses and whatnot if you notice. So that's one issue with these. But of course, if you just held it down, it would be enough time to check a circuit, right? If you hold it down for more than a second. But if it's anything quick or in a minute short or something, you might miss it with one of these tools like this. Now on the BT280, uh, if we all right, here we are with the BT280 and under the smart mode, which will give you power and ground with light, you know, basically you see I got a red light there on power, but it takes a second or so for it to process that. Same thing on the ground side, go here, got a green light on ground, takes about a second for it to recognize it would recognize this um also same thing you got a intermittent cable or something it's not going to give you you know the best of information you see how long it took right there to recognize also kind of slows you down on testing fuses because you got to wait that long pretty much for each one to read um and as you can see going fast it's almost no update right which could happen with the bad cable, faulty cable. The multimeter mode, however, does give you some information. It's, I believe it's pretty much live, you know, it's, it's pretty much live. So that's another option you have. But the only issue is the multimeter doesn't help you on the ground side, right? So on the ground side, you can't get reading. So if you're testing a ground circuit, you wouldn't get that fast update. And here we're gonna do the same test with the uh, KM10, right? So, one second here. So as you can see, I'm hitting the power. And as you can see, the updates. They're not basically right there instant, which can throw you off on some, in some scenarios. So that's just something to, uh, to know, right? Same thing on the ground side. But then again, you hold it down a second, and it's there. You see about the update time. Same here. Get the update time on the positive side, which is the same. It takes about that long. And there you have it on that issue. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show you is uh, power injection. So these all um, have the, the ability to inject power. So you might want to activate a fan or a light or something and check to see if you've got some other issue. You can, you know, activate, send power to a certain bulb or something direct. Um, but before I get to that, I wanted to show you guys a new, neat little um, tool that I also sell. Uh, this is basically an uh, EVAP uh, smoke machine, a mini EVAP smoke machine. doesn't require any special liquids or uh, power or anything like that. It works with basically just a cigar. So basically, you can just get a standard like black and mild cigar from your corner store. You would light it, insert it into this red port right here, and in this blue port, you would connect the blue hose. Um, and on the outlet side of this blue hose, you have these different connectors which would be able to fit. For example, on this car, I would be able to remove this connector here and stuff that port into here and blow smoke through this system and if there was any kind of a leak in this system right here anywhere that goes where that hose goes the smoke would basically come out so i could find any kind of leaks in this car that also works for headlights you've got a leaky headlight that keeps getting water in it you don't know where it's coming from you can just plug in the same little hose here and then you just pump it you pump it like this just this pumping action will suck the smoke in from the cigar and blow it out through the hose into whatever system you have evap system headlight or any other system that's closed that should not have any type of leaks and you can't determine where it's at and once you see that smoke coming out uh, you know that you've uh, pretty much found um, your problem, your leak, where it's at. And this will be in the description box. I'll put a link 
uh, where you can purchase this. Um, and uh, it's very effective. I've sold hundreds of these and a lot of satisfied customers that save hundreds of dollars by troubleshooting, taking it to a shop or whatnot, or even other techs that, you know, need something quick that, you know, nothing really complicated to do a, a quick check. Um, I'll, like I said, looks, the, the link is in the description box, so you can check that out if you like. Okay, now on to the injection. So on the KM10, we've got the power injection moving up like that and also ground. So we can inject power or ground to any circuit to activate a uh, anything, a light, a switch, or whatnot. Um, the same thing, it works exactly the same way on the uh, KM50. But on the Auto BT280, this is actually my second one. I got a note that the first one actually died. Uh, it wasn't able to inject power anymore. Um, yeah, you just hold this back to get to the main menu on this, by the way. Um, you have to go... Uh, actually up to here to active that's one thing it's a little bit annoying whereas on these tools they're pretty much strictly for this stuff so once you power up this tool it's automatically ready for injection you know all of these tools um, but the BT 280 you have to actually go to active and under active you have which is also pretty neat because these tools lack that function you have the latch so if you need to leave the tool in the car while you go outside and troubleshoot you can activate the latch let me activate it here yeah so right now it's applying 12.6 battery volts of course um, to the tip and i could have this in the car constantly powering a cable or a circuit and then i can go outside and test and see if i'm receiving that whereas these you pretty much got to have your finger on the button so this is an advantage on this one. Some of the other Power Pros model also have a latch feature, but these do not. They're pretty much on your finger. Um, also, one thing to note on this one, uh, there was some issue with the circuit breaker on this. I believe on the model I have, there are some models that do have the feature updated. But if you touch this to power and you basically can short it out and it would that's what happened to the last one I had. So even though I could hear the um, the uh, the relay inside clicking when I tried to activate the power on this, it was not actually sending power. So this section up here that says volt DC being supplied was always staying zero. But which was strange is that um, the other one I had had the ground function. This model does not. I don't know why. Uh, it's possibly a software issue. So it says features being upgraded. So I cannot apply ground on this unit right now, which is kind of stupid. Um, the other thing it has is on this one is another advantage. It has the five volt uh, injection, right? So I can inject five volts here, right? So right now it's up. It's actually putting out three I can raise that all the way up to five volts so it's 4.9 volts it's putting out at the tip so this is good for testing powering certain um, sensors for your engine and whatnot and that's an advantage over these units they do not offer your five volt output right so that's another advantage of this unit I can drop that all the way down to zero and minimum half a volt so that's what I got it set at, and that's what it's putting out. So this is another advantage of this unit. By the way, the unit I had that did burn out, um, even though it was not able to inject power normally, it was still able to send out power through the five volts circuit, which was to me kind of strange. You would think they're linked somehow, but the five volt section and the 12 volt section must have been different internally. Um, it's also got some other features, uh, injectors, um, which basically sends, you know, the pulse, whatnot, different modes to the injectors. And I haven't tried this yet, but I did, you know, watch some videos on it. And it looks pretty, pretty handy. Okay, next I'm going to show you the oscilloscope function K that is on the uh, the BT280. Um, I'm going to um, connect it to basically CAN. And so you can kind of see what the square square wave looks like. That's at um, half a second right there. 
you can see that. That's what the CAN uh, oscilloscope function looks like on the BT280. And if I switch this to the KM50, um, it has the voltage AC, which gives you somewhat of the features, but you're gonna see the difference of what this looks like. So, as you can see there, we're at a division of 20 here. It's not exactly clear. I'm gonna raise it up here to 50. 100. So, this looks a little strange to me <laughs> on this tool. I prefer definitely, if you're gonna use it to check like your square wave, I would probably prefer the uh, BT280, right? This um, function also is in the uh, KM10, by the way. It's under the volts AC. All right, that's pretty much it on this uh, review slash, you know, quick, um, basically, um, overview of these uh, devices. Um, I just got to add on the actual power probe, uh, the actual power probe brand of these uh, circuit testers, um, a lot of them are actually very rapid on testing circuits, unlike uh, this one, these rather. Of course, this one is very fast because it's instant, it's straight through. So this is the best one in um, terms of that, right? So I would uh, definitely highly uh, recommend picking this up no matter which one of these you have because this still comes in pretty handy. Uh, its downside is, for example, I was doing a troubleshooting one issue and I suspected voltage was not coming in fully uh, to that circuit. But being that this doesn't have a gauge or even sound, I was unable to determine, you know, with, you know, any way of saying for sure that that circuit was producing the full 12 volts. I couldn't say if it was producing, you know, uh, 10 or 11.5 instead of the 12, right? Uh, of course, the light would be dimmer, but you can't always go by that because it could be the sun. You could be in the shade, you know? So, but that's where these have, of course, a big advantage. But sometimes this is the best tool, <laughs> trust me, uh, for do doing certain circuit tests and whatnot. The simple test light, it beats out these tools a lot of times on certain things, right? There's a time and place for everything. Um, if I had a choice, um, I would have this one. This would be my primary. This is used for certain troubleshooting issues. And then this would be where I might need to use oscilloscope or do some load amp testing or um, when you want to test the parasitic draw, you could use this with the latch feature and whatnot. And uh, this is where this tool would outshine the other ones. But for troubleshooting first, either this or this, these are very similar. But being that the price is almost the same, I would say go with this one, which is a better tool, in my opinion, than that one. Um, and of course this as, you know, to get those, you know, pesky problems, this can help a lot. Um, yeah, so that's it. Again, check the uh, link in the description to see if you would like uh, to purchase this or, you know, support me on this, on my channel. So um, appreciate any questions, you leave it down in the comments. I could, I'll try to answer whatever I can.